Hello, Herman here with a new video in the ClearPass workshop series where we build the ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with Wired, Wireless, Active Directory and much more. In our previous we were able to implement Aruba user roles on the instant AP and ClearPass roles on the ClearPass server. So we combined them together. If you missed that video, it's critical for the understanding. So please watch back if you missed that video before. One of the things that can be optimized is that if we check our service that we created is that in the role mapping we are checking AD group membership and in our enforcement we are checking that roles again to assign the enforcement profiles. So what if someone can sign in from another computer, a non-domain computer to that account and that can be done either if you have a username and password, users know their username and password or if you have a certificate you can export the certificates to a file and then import it to an other device. So you can see here how I can export it and I imported it in an other client. And uh, if we check here in the certificate store, what we can see is that our user certificate is in there. This is the same one that's exported from the other client. So what now if we connect to the network? So if we go to our Airheads Corp SSID and we connect to it, you can see that we are connected to the SSID. And if we check back our policy, uh, yeah, that's completely expected. So what we might want to do is take into consideration if we are user authenticated uh, only or if we are a user authenticated on a computer that's part of the domain. And if we check the access tracker, what we can see is that for our device where we used the admin one credentials, which were exported, we can see that we are just user authenticated. If we switch back a few authentications to the original device, we can see that we have the machine authenticated role there as well. So how comes that ClearPass knows that this one is machine authenticated? It does that by looking back in the authentications and if there was once a computer authentication, so like this one with the host name, then it will remember that for a certain time and we can use this information to assign different roles for a user. If it's on a corporate device, which is machine authenticated or on a non-corporate device where we just have the user authentication. So let's show how we can configure that. So let's go back into our service. Role mapping will be the same and our enforcement. Uh, here we can make some modifications. So if we modify this enforcement policy, go to our rules. If our first rule, for example, let's change that first. We can see we need to match all of the conditions. So what we could easily do is check that we have both the employee role and we have the machine authenticated role. So then this enforcement profile will only be sent back if we have both conditions met. So, and we are employee and we are machine authenticated. And we can do the same for the admin and for the other roles. And we'll leave the machine authenticated. If we are not logged in, we want to have access to the network as well. So we can enroll certificates and so on. And the default is deny access. So let's see how that works. So let's go to the access tracker. Uh, one practical thing what I typically do is I can clone the tab. So I have two tabs and I can use one for the access tracker and the other one for the configuration. So you can duplicate it like this. And here we see that we have our device that's not part of the domain. What we can now do is we can do a change status and change status is triggering a change of authorization and we can do a terminate session on this one, which will let the instant AP know that the device needs to be disconnected and then it will automatically reconnect. And if we check that in the access tracker, now we can see that we have a deny access profile, which of course is because we don't have the machine authenticate. We just have the WS admin and not the machine authenticated. If we do that COA for our corporate device as well, we can see that device still is able to access the network. And of course, that is because it both has the admin role and the machine authenticated role. But what if we want to allow access for this device that's not part of the domain? 
we can expand our policy and let's do that by creating first an enforcement profile for BYOD. And later on our instant AP, we can create our BYOD role, which will assign different access for BYOD users. So now we created our enforcement profile to return the BYOD role to the instant AP. Let's take that into our enforcement policy. We can create a new rule here. If the tips role equals admin, then we can return the BYOD. No, let's do something else. So we can also use here the matches any operator and we can have multiple role names here. So we can have uh, either admin or if you're an employee, then we return the BYOD role. So we can have a multiple selection here as well. And the position here at the end, that's uh, good. So let's try again. Let's do a reconnect for that client. Oh yeah, we can't do that as, uh, for the non-domain computer because it's not connected to the network at the moment. So uh, let's go to the client and connect again from there. So we are connected, that appears to work. And we can see an extra tracker as well that we have sent back the BYOD Aruba user role. Now let's have a look on our instant AP. And in the client list, we can indeed see that we have the default, the Airheads Corp, which is the default for the SSID. Now let's create a new Aruba user role under configuration security. We can add a new role. Uh, let's name that BYOD capital because that's what we send back from ClearPass. And now let's uh, add the VLAN assignment. So VLAN 13, that's my guest network. We will give full access to the guest network they can't access anything in the corporate network. So let's trigger re-authentication again for this user. And we can see again, we have the BYD enforcement profile. And now if we check the client list, we see that we have switched now to the BYD role. As well, we can see the VLAN has changed. So we now have an IP address in the network 13. And that's all uh, because of this new enforcement policy. So only if the user is in a specific group and it is machine authenticated we will return the respective aruba user roles and if it's machine authenticated we of course will allow access as well if we have an admin or an employee if they're part of those groups and uh, then we will return a byod which will end up the client in the guest network so that's a good progress that we made. We now are able to distinguish clients that are part of the domain and clients that are not. However, there is a better solution for this as well. And that's called Microsoft Teep. Then we'll cover that in the next video. And what Microsoft Teep will do, it will combine the machine authentication and the user authentication in the same EAP transaction. And that will allow us to do this even more securely rather than using the client MAC address as caching for the machine authentication status. We can use the authentication combined for user and machine. So that's it for now. I hope you like this video. If so, please like, comment and subscribe.